Hey friends, I'm Brandon and I am so excited to introduce you to this new series we're starting today. It's called Promise. And this month, we will pretend to be on Paradise Island as we talk about some of God's promises. So I hope you're wearing some comfortable clothes and you're ready to learn and relax because before we toss around that beach wall, we're gonna worship together. So let's do this thing. Come over here. When night is falling, when fear is calming, still you're calling me. Yeah, when faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm wonderful place for us. As a matter of fact, God created this whole world for us to enjoy and to take care of. So what? What does it matter to God? And what does it matter to us? Well, at the very beginning of time, God created a world and then created humankind to live in it and to take care of it. You know, Adam and Eve. God gave people the power to rule over all living things and gave them everything they needed. But even though they were given a paradise, the man and woman were a lot like us, and they messed up big time. But why do you think Adam and Eve listened to the serpent instead of what God told them to do? They chose to ignore the rule about the tree in the middle of the garden. I mean, if you knew what's right, why would you do what's wrong? Come on. They broke the trust between themselves and God by disobeying. But do you know what God did even though God was disappointed by Adam and Eve's choices? God showed them love 
And even after Adam and Eve messed up, God clothed them and prevented them from having to live their life without God forever. Here's our big idea. God promised to fix what was broken. Let's say that again. God promised to fix what was broken. Things got really messy and dark, but God promised to fix it all. We're gonna learn a lot about our big idea today, but before we continue, I wanna introduce you to some of my friends, Carl and Cassie. Check this out. Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Eduardo. And welcome to Grow TV. Welcome. I'm very excited you're here. He said it. Welcome to Grow TV. Introducing your host, Carl. And your co-host, Cassie. Where we learn, where we grow, and we talk about Jesus. Once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hello, everybody. So glad you could be here. And boy, do I have a surprise for you. I want you to meet someone who is very special to me. I was walking through the park one day, and in the middle of the sidewalk, there was this beautiful egg. I was stunned. I didn't know what to do. But what I did know was that if he stayed on that sidewalk, he would get hurt. So I took him home. So I present to you, Eduardo. Say hello, Eduardo. He's shy. What's that? Oh, stop. They're gonna love you. He's a little shy. Don't worry, Aguar. There's no reason to be shy. Carl? Hey, Cassie. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm feeling okay. Why do you ask? Really? I mean, you're talking to an egg. Oh, Cass. Not just any old egg. This is Eduardo. Eduardo? Yes, ma'am. He's the cutest little egg in the world. Not only is a one in a million egg, he's a one in a dozen. Okay. Did you give him that name? Sure did. Thought of it myself. You like it? Sure. It's interesting. Well, I mean, it wasn't my first choice. You want to hear the other names I thought of? Not really. Great! So at first I thought of Shelly because of the chill. Then I thought that wasn't strong enough of a name. Then I thought of Yoko. Scarlett Yokehampton, Thomas Egison, Egna, Yoklanda, Little Yoki, Edgar Allan Poe, Egg Sharon, Egg Xavier, and Greg. Greg? Yeah, like Grr Egg. Nice. So what now? Are you guys like best friends now? We are. When we found each other, just linked. Like two childhood friends who knew each other since like, well, childhood. Not gonna lie, that's a little weird. Cassie, you wouldn't understand. It's an egg thing. I guess. You should have seen me. We we're playing catch just like the old days. What old days? Back when I used to play baseball. You never played baseball. Oh yeah, I forgot. <gasps> Take a deep breath. Eguardo. <sighs> Carl, it's okay. It's not okay. Eguardo, I dropped him. I'm a terrible person. Carl, you're not a terrible person. Yes, I am. No way. You're nice, you're funny, and you make videos that crack people up all the time. I do? Yeah. I make people crack up all the time. Oh, I, I didn't Just mean... like how it cracked at Guardo. <laughs> Listen, Carl, I think we should talk about this week's story. <sighs> What's the point? Well, I think it'll make you feel better. Really? Really, remember the beginning of the Bible where God created the universe? Yeah, I do remember that. That was awesome and perfect. It was, and on the sixth day of creation, God created the first two humans ever, Adam and Eve. And they were pretty perfect too. They were. It was all created the way God wanted it to be. But something bad happened. <gasps> oh no. There was a bad snake that lied to Adam and Eve. And after God had made everything, the Bible talks about a serpent talking to Adam and Eve. A serpent? Like a snake? Why would they talk to a snake? It's hard to say, but the serpent was very clever. You see, snakes represented the presence of evil or chaos in the world, and that's what the serpent wanted. He wanted Adam and Eve to doubt themselves and want something else, something they knew God didn't want for them. So they listened to the serpent, which no longer made them perfect as God created them. That's horrible. 
This is a sad story. Sure was, but later, in Genesis chapter 3, God made a promise. What promise did God make? God promised that even though people are no longer perfect, God's ways would always be, and that God could make what was broken whole again. So God promised to fix what was broken? Yep. And you want to know some good news? I love some good news. You just said our big idea. <gasps> Today's big idea is God promised to fix what was broken. That's right. On the count of 100, no, three, we're all going to say it together. Ready? One, two, three. God promised to fix what is broken. Woohoo! All right. Good job, everyone. Yeah. So how are you feeling now, Carl? <sighs> Better. It hurts seeing something that I love broken, but it's cool to know that God can fix things that are broken. Plus, having an egg as a best friend can be really tough. I guess you could say it isn't all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> See you next week, kids. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV. That's too bad about what happened to Eduardo, Eduardo. But aren't you thankful that we have a promise that God gave us? You see, we can't do anything ourselves without what's been broken. When Adam and Eve opened their hearts to sin, they were separated from God. But that's what sin does to us. It separates us from God. You probably know what this is. It's a piece of paper. There's nothing really special about it, but currently it's completely whole. Think of this paper as you and me, created by God and whole. But what happens if I just rip this paper down the middle? It's still paper. I just caused some separation to it. And that's exactly what sin does. It separates us from God. And no matter how much I try to put this thing together, it just doesn't really go back. And I can try and try, but it just doesn't. And that's why we need God, because this will never get to its original state. You remember our big idea? God promised to fix what was broken. Like, check this out. Whoa, <laughs> think about it like this. How would you feel if someone broke something super special to you? I mean, super important. Maybe it's your favorite toy or your gaming system. Maybe it's a football or an old picture. How would you feel if someone came into your home, broke that thing that is so special to you? Probably just as good as Carl felt when Eduardo was broken, right? You would probably be pretty upset. Thankfully, God doesn't act the same way we do. God is willing to fix what is broken because God is gracious. He's compassionate and he's slow to anger and he loves us so much. Well, we've learned a lot of things today. Now what? What does God want us to do about it? When we create something, we are so proud of it and we love what we create. That is how God feels about everything that he creates. That includes you and me. God loves the world and God loves all of the people in the world. It's like if you used all these Legos to create something. I mean, you would be very proud of the work that you did, right? You would want people to see, but you probably wouldn't feel great about someone coming in and just stomping all over it. Sometimes people do things that destroy the world or ruin their relationships with people. But remember, God promised to fix what was broken. There's a lot of brokenness in the world and you might see and hear a lot of things that make you feel a lot. That's because we live in a broken world. But remember our big idea. God promised to fix what was broken. So it doesn't always have to be like this. That's why it's important to always work on your relationship with God. We just need to love Him and love others. And it doesn't take much. So let's pray this together. Say this after me. Dear God, what a wonderful world that you've created. Thank you for creating this place and all that's in it. Most of all, thank you for creating each and every one of us. Help us to take care of the world and to take care of each other. Lord, we love you. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm so glad you guys joined with me today. We have a lot to learn over the next few weeks. But before we go, I have a question for you. Where would you consider your paradise or the perfect place to live? It could be anything from an amusement park to the mall, the library, or if you're like me, then it'd probably be in a computer lab with a bunch of gaming computers and all my friends. All right, anyway, I'll see you guys next week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.